So how exactly am I coping with the end of the world? By making frilly Edwardian underwear. Hello and welcome to my channel. If you are new here, hello! My name is Marie and I hope you enjoy today's video and maybe even subscribe. If you are a returning subscriber, hello, welcome back and thank you so much for the support. So I've been gone for a bit, for about two months actually here on YouTube and I apologize for that very long hiatus but I have been very overwhelmed with school and work and I really needed a break but I am back and I am so excited to make new content so thank you so much for your patience. It really means the world. So if you've been here for a while, you probably know that I like video games and I really like the Bioshock series in particular and I love Elizabeth from Bioshock Infinite. Among other things, Elizabeth is a fashion icon and none of her outfits miss. I also really love historical costuming, especially the 1910s and Bioshock Infinite takes place in 1912 so I had to make the tower dress. <laughs> Claire Hummel, who is one of the character designers for Bioshock Infinite and was in charge of creating Elizabeth's tower dress, her first dress, went above and beyond at the creation of the tower dress. Not only did she make a dress that was so beautifully tailored towards Elizabeth's personality, it was also extremely historically accurate as well. I actually had the pleasure of meeting and talking to Miss Hummel at San Diego Comic Con a few years ago, and she was so kind in answering all of my questions that I had about her historically accurate Disney princess series and her Bioshock Infinite work. She gave me so much insight and knowledge on how her research went and how she created Elizabeth's dress. If you are interested in all that knowledge and insight, I do have an article about that up on my Patreon and I will leave my Patreon link down in the description box. So this isn't actually my first go at the tower dress. I did make a couple of other versions of the tower dress years ago and they're not that great. Then again, I was very young and I was just starting out on my cosplay journey. But that's okay, we all have to start from somewhere. But having the knowledge and the skill set that I do now, I wanted to try again. And I knew that I wanted to start from the undergarments up. That way I could use both my love of historical costuming and my love for Bioshock Infinite and put them together. Before actually starting on the sewing process, I did do a lot of research myself. I used Miss Hummel's insight as a springboard in order to start me off on my own research. And again, all that research is published on my Patreon. I spent about a month doing all this research, so it was a lot, but I'm really happy I did it because I feel that's going to make my costume feel and fit better than my previous renditions did, hopefully. Without further ado, let's get to the sewing table. Hello, voice over Marie here. For the garments of the 1910s, we typically start with a chemise and drawers or combinations. Combinations are, you guessed it, a combination of the chemise and drawers. They are sewn together as opposed to worn separately. Now I have always wanted a pair of combinations for myself so I decided that I was going to make combinations. These are also going to be used for other 1910s wear I have in my closet that isn't related to this costume. I actually drafted my own combinations pattern because I am cheap and I really didn't want to pay $30 for a pre-made combinations pattern. I simply eyeballed it and then I used some reference images from catalogs that I found on Google Images of the actual time period. Overall, drafting my own pattern worked out just fine, but I did run into a couple of snags, which I'll talk about a little later in the video. After I drafted the pattern, I began to cut my fabric. I used plain cotton, The combinations of the 1910s were beginning to become less frilly than its Edwardian predecessors simply because that pigeon breast was no longer as popular as it once was. I actually saw an authentic pair of 1918 combinations in person once and it was completely flat, there was no lace. It actually looked more like a 1920 set of combinations. So because I saw that, I wanted to have a little bit middle of the road since it is 1912, so it is technically closer to the Edwardian era than the 1920s, but I didn't want to add a ton of lace, especially since Elizabeth's tower dress really doesn't have a pronounced pigeon breast on it, so I just decided to go for a little bit of trim rather than add layers and layers and layers of lace. So the bodice that you're seeing in the first few clips isn't actually the bodice I ended up 
going with. And that is because the chemise that you're seeing right now was too small for my bust. Fit my waist and my hips perfectly, my bust was not having it. And I did try to add force to it, I did try to expand it a bit, but it just wasn't working. So I decided to throw in the towel and just start again. And the reason I'm sharing this with you is because I really want to make it clear that it is okay to make mistakes and it's okay to remake things. I did decide that I was going to use that as a mock-up to make my new pattern for my new chemise and the second time around it was perfect and I'm going to actually use the fabric from that mock-up for my corset mock-ups and in case I need to make any other mock-ups. Once I was finished remaking the chemise, I used butt enclosures. So a lot of you know from my previous videos that I don't like putting buttons. I don't like making buttonholes, I don't like buttons. I really wanted to do a hook and eye closure, but it just wasn't working. The hooks were slipping out, it just, it wasn't fun. So I said, okay, I'm gonna be a big girl and I'm going to sew buttonholes. And it really wasn't that bad. Once the chemise was finished, I added the waistband. So I just used a piece of lace with blue ribbon I threaded through it as my waistband. I actually have seen several combinations that have this as their waistband, as opposed to attaching the chemise and the drawers together. I really like it. I think it adds such a delicate little flair to it and I love lace and I love ribbons. And yes, I did pick the blue because Elizabeth's color is blue. Once the waistband was sewn onto the chemise, I continued with the drawers. So the drawers are split crotch at this time period, which basically means that the crotch isn't sewn together. And the reason this is, is for practicality. Let's just say that it made trips to the powder room far easier and far more efficient. The drawers were pretty simple. I didn't have to remake them, thankfully. I really like that they're so roomy and that they're so big because I didn't have to worry about getting an exact fit. And once the drawers were finished, I sewed them onto the waistband. Once that was done, I hemmed everything. And then I got to my favorite part the trim. So I did measure and I did pin everything before I actually went to sewing. And once everything was pinned and measured to my liking, I threaded my blue ribbon through the lace and then I got to sewing. So I did make the straps out of lace instead of using those thin ribbon straps because I've seen a lot of combinations of this time period use those beautiful lace straps. And at first I was a little torn and I said, well, let me just pin it and see. There's no harm in that. And I ended up falling in love. So there we go. <laughs> That's the story. However, if you just rather use a thin strip of ribbon for the straps, you can absolutely do that. I've seen a lot of combinations with that as well. It really is what's to your liking. And with that, the combination were finished. This process took about a week and I worked about three hours a day on these combinations so it didn't take terribly long. I recommend a combinations project to anyone of any skill level. For beginners, it's definitely something challenging and it makes you work on a lot of different skills. For more advanced sewers, it definitely helps you brush up on a lot of skills and will make you work on your weaker points of sewing. For me, it's buttons. I don't like buttons and then I realized that they're really not that bad and I kind of fell in love with buttons. And that is it for today's video. If you enjoyed today's video and you would like to see more of the Elizabeth dress creation and you're not subscribed, please subscribe, turn that notification bell down below, and give this video a big thumbs up. If you'd like to see more of my sweaty, poorly lit face that looks very vampiric today, feel free to follow me on Instagram and on TikTok. I post regularly on TikTok and I am going to start live streaming again next week, and I post on Instagram whenever I want. If you'd like to see exclusive behind the scenes content, including the research Bible I did for this Elizabeth costume, please consider becoming a patron today. These videos and these projects would not be possible without my patrons, so I really appreciate you guys. I will leave my link tree with all that information down below in the description box. Join me next time as we create Elizabeth's iconic corset. A historically accurate version, of course. Have an amazing and safe week. Bye!